St. Columbus Cathedral was never the same since renovations in 1867 disturbed the grave of the former Bishop William Higgins. His tomb was moved inside the cathedral and that's when things started to get weird. Workers began hearing footsteps in the locked gallery, apparitions in photographs, and the organ would sound without anybody being around. Leap Castle is said to be the most haunted castle in Ireland. It has had a horrific history with each passing century being punctuated by ferocious acts of violence. In 1532, a priest was killed inside the chapel in front of his family by his own brother. In 1922, workmen found a secret dungeon hidden behind the wall of the bloody chapel. When they opened, they discovered human skeletons on top of a wooden spike that took three card loads to remove. Charles Fort, an impressive star-shaped garrison in Cork, has seen its share of bloodshed. But despite the battles and rebellions in its walls, the story of the White Lady is the one that really chills the blood. The daughter of the fort's commander was set to wed an officer stationed there, but when her father shot the man, the bride-to-be threw herself into the ocean. Her lost soul continues to wander the grounds, wedding dress and all. Home to the first ever witch trial in Ireland, Kilkenny is no stranger to the supernatural. During a great flood in 1763, a crowd was crossing John's Bridge when it collapsed, drowning 16 people. Ever since, locals and visitors tell of eerie ghostly figures in the river, scratching at the banks, leaning where the current structure stands and rising on the morning mist. Loftus Hall in Wexford is for many years said to have been visited by the devil. Legend has it that during a storm at sea, a dark stranger approached the hall after his ship was driven into the nearby Slade Harbour with the rough seas. He was invited into seeking shelter and spent some time with the Tottenham family who were living at the hall at the time. The young lady, Anne Houghtonton, was especially taken with this dark stranger and fell head over heels for him. One night, during a card game, she dropped the card upon, and upon bending down to retrieve it, she noticed that this dark stranger had cloven hoofs instead of feet. As soon as he realized what she had seen, he shot through the roof in a ball of flames. Anne never recovered. She went into a state of shock and madness and her family locked her into a therapy room for fear that anyone would see her. She died a couple of years later, still quite young, but her death was no release her servants and family members reported seeing her wandering through the house at night. This lonely hunting lodge, situated in Dublin Mountains, was the meeting place for the infamous Dublin Hellfire Club. Built in 1725 on a Neolithic passage tomb, the building was used by a cult made up of lords and noblemen to practice immoral acts and hold black masses to summon Satan. Kremlin Prison in Belfast held one of the most dangerous inmates. Ghost hunters and visitors to the former prison have reported several sightings and hearing strange sounds. Doors can be heard slamming shut by themselves and male and female voices can be heard clearly calling out for help. The sight of the hangman's noose alone can send shivers down your spine. The tortured echoes of ghostly inmates have been heard and even recorded in this abandoned asylum built in 1798 by William Sanders Halloran, author of the first book on Irish psychiatry and inventor of the Halloran's chair, a rotating chair that spun the hysterical patient at a hundred revolutions per minute. The Delaric portion of the complex is said to be haunted by the desperate souls who were condemned to live out their lives there. Looking at the Baligali Castle, you'd never think that it is one of the most haunted places in Ireland. It all started when a previous owner locked his wife, Lady Isabel, in a towel because she couldn't produce a male heir. Rather than starve, Isabel leapt to her death on the rocks below. Now the place is a hotel, 
but the guests have seen her figure and phantom children roaming the corridors. Seafield was the height of the 19th century luxury until one of the sons, Owen, brought home Egyptian mummies from his travels, stimulating the interest of a particularly powerful poltergeist that would shake the house and shatter the ornaments. Terrified servants saw a menacing dark figure and the priests had to be called to perform a failed exorcism. 